men should be able to get their point. We would only have three members if we don't get Dan up and working.
me forget I gotta tell Ian when we're ready to start. Okay. And don't let me forget to hit record. And and Can you hear me, Dan? Yes, I can. Okay. So now you're on the phone, but you can walk. He won't be able to hear me. Can I unmute? Okay. So you have it on mute. Can you hear us? Do a thumbs up if you can hear us. Okay. Okay. Now, so you're muted right now, I believe. So now I'm you can you I can hear you go ahead and put yourself on mute again could everyone else hear him when he was going okay, so we're going to attempt to start this what I want everyone to be fully aware of. It's got to be fun with me. Stop the recording. Recording sound. This conference okay. will now be recorded. Okay. So what I first want to point out to everyone, as you can see, this is brand new for all of us. And um, none of us are good at this, and um, it, it's a challenge. So what I really ask everyone to do is leave yourself on mute. You need to be on mute. If you want to make a comment, you're going to have to raise your hand because I can see people um, on their screen. Um, anyone that is phoning in, you can send an email, and we can take your comments that way. Um, Um, it's it's very important, and actually the, the email is um, ontv at orionontv.org. So anyone that's not, where did I just go? Hold on, everybody, my screen just changed. Okay, anyone that's not on the video conference that would like to send in an email, we can take your comments that way. Um, it's imperative that everyone speak um, somewhat loudly and into the speaker so that we can hear you. Um, it will be a challenge um, that literally uh, I'm going to direct and then I am the administrator so um, you know I'm the one that can turn on and turn off and so it's really imperative we have one person speaking at a time. As in any ZBA meeting the ZBA members will hear a case from the applicant and then the applicant will say, I'm done. He will mute his, um, his speaker. And then the ZBA chair will then take, and he will have the microphone and start discussions, then mute himself when a ZBA member raises their hand that they'd like to comment. As in any ZBA meeting, there will be a time for public comment but that is further on, and the chair will let you know when that time comes. When that time comes, we will first take any um, email comments that we received and then after those we would then open up to anyone that's on the video conference um, again the chair will let you know when we're at the video conference people you'll raise your hand we've got a name to call you by and the chair will say for instance I want to hear from um, Mike Riddle 
in which case um, Lauren would then um, hit his mute and Mike Riddle would start speaking. Um, does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if it makes sense to everyone that's hearing this. Okay, that's good. Um, so I would say with that, um, that, oh, and when you're making a public comment, when it is your turn, please say your name and address for our record. If you're emailing us, please give us your name and address for our record. With that, I'm going to put it on mute, and I'm going to pull it over and hand it over to the chair, Mr. Yeros. Give me a second to mute here. Okay, thanks, Tammy. Uh, one thing, do we have everybody on the camera now? Because I only see six images. One, two, three. I see uh, John, I see Ryan, Don, Lucy, and yourself. Is that everybody that's on camera? Okay, I was waiting for you, I was waiting for you to mute. <laughs> um, so there are some people that have, like um, Mr. Durham, have called in. And so those don't have an image because they don't have their video camera turned on. Does that make sense? Yes, I know, Dan, but what about, is there other people that are on the conference that, that we can't see? Good luck. Well, for instance, do you see the applicant, Patrick Ray? Does anybody see? I, I see that Lauren must not see him. I see him. Give me a thumbs up if you see him. So you might have a small enough it, so you might have a small enough screen that it can't show all of the images, but if you look up, there should be a symbol of um, like two individuals and then a number. Um, so it's just a matter of they're there, but you can't see their face because there's only so many images that can hit on the screen. So yes, there are more people on this uh, video conference than you can physically see. Um, you know, if, if they start speaking, their face should pop up for you when you get to that point. But so that's where uh, myself as the administrator, I'm gonna have to see somebody that's raising their hand and, and do it from here, because I'm able to see everyone. That take care of it? Yep, that works for me. Okay, well, this is Monday, March 23rd, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. We'll come to order. Please call the roll. Yaros. Here. Durham. Thumbs up, Durham. Nope, I need a, I need a voice. I need a voice. Unmute. Unmute yourself for a second. Okay. Here. Got it. Walker. Here. Kosherzinski. Here. We have a quorum. Take yourself off mute, Mo Lauren. Okay, thanks. I don't know why I didn't come off right away. Anyway, we have uh, minutes of the February 10th, 2020, regular meeting minutes. Um, we need a motion or corrections if you have. I'll make a motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Support. Okay, all in favor, signify by, by saying aye, or hold your, uh, I guess by saying aye. 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 Actually, we're going to, we're going to, can everyone mute? We do have somebody that's not muted that's causing all kinds of problems. Dan, I think it's you, not to call you out, but I think it's you. Can you please mute your phone? Okay, so that it was you. I know it's gonna be a little bit of an inconvenience for you. We'll just have to take it really slow. Lauren, with the order, I think it's important where we no, normally do eyes and nays that we need to do a roll call. So I apologize for not pointing that out. It'll slow things a little bit, but not too much. So if you could, um, Deb will take a roll call. For the minutes being approved. Yaros. Yes. Durham. Unmute. 
Yes, did you get that? Yes, I did, thank you. Dan Durham. Yes, did you get Okay, go on to the next. Um, Walker. You try it again. Walker, Walker, you got yourself backwards. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Kosher Zinski. Yes. Is that everybody? Yes. Okay, we've got our vote. Proceed. Thank you. Okay, that was unanimous. Next, we have the minutes for the February 24th regular meeting. Uh, and we need a motion for that. <laughs> Please raise your hand. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll support that. We are all supported, okay. Okay, we'll take the roll. I gotta do it. Hold on. I didn't have that prepared. <laughs> <laughs> One moment. Let's just do it backwards. All right. Uh, do Durham first. Durham. Yes. Okay, now mute yourself, Dan. Walker. Yes. Kosherzinski. Yes. Yaros. Say it again. Yes, for me, if you called Yaros. <laughs> I did. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Lauren. Okay, next we have agenda review and approval. We have three cases as advertised. First case is ZBA business is AB 220, I mean 2020 06, John Ligand at 4454 Maybe Road, 0930 This was postponed from the February 24th meeting for a lack of a quorum. The petitioner is requesting one variance from zoning Art 78, Article 2702, lot size over 2.5 acres, a 664-square-foot variance above the allotted 1,900-square-foot maximum floor area of all accessory buildings to build an attached 1,364-square-foot garage in addition to <clears throat> uh, existing 1120 square foot detached garage and an 80 square foot shed. Okay. I have looked at the uh, petitioner's uh, file information and the building plans. The only, couple of questions I have as a petitioner would be that I uh, noticed on the overhead uh, county shot of the property that there's quite a few cars around. And I only wanted to know whether or not there's a business being run out of here. Uh, no, there isn't. Okay, next I noticed that, um, that basically the uh, addition's gonna be uh, built over the top of an existing concrete pad that's uh, about that same size that's already existing and you'll be using the existing one car garage for uh, addition to your house for living space uh, is this correct uh, no it isn't the existing uh, garage is going to become a, a family room addition and they we understand now that the permit that, that the township uh, has an ordinance for not more than three cars. So we're still looking to add the same square footage. The existing garage goes away and we'll bring back three cars. And, and it, you're actually gonna be stepping up uh, into the, the existing garage to become the new family room. You'll be stepping up in that from the new garage. Okay, thank you very much for those answers. Uh, board members, do you have questions? Kosher Zinski is. 
So, yeah, I was over there a few days ago. I believe, yeah, it was Saturday. So now you're saying that where the garage, where you have your attached garage, I just want to make sure I have this straight. Where you have the attached garage is going to be your addition. And then I noticed that behind that you have a three-car garage, right, on your property? There's an existing outbuilding and there's an existing shed. The existing attached garage becomes family room and the new garage then takes up the space encased by the stakes that you can see out there. Or we put cones over top of them so the snow would not mess, would not make them disappear. Okay, one more question. Um, what is your practical difficulty? Well, the practically, practical difficulty really encompasses um, the fact that uh, one of John's daughters has uh, helped people physical difficulty that uh, puts her in uh, a bad situation when it's cold outside. She's becoming of the age where she's getting her driver's license and we're trying to prepare for the future such that she can go out to the garage and get in her vehicle without exposing herself to cold weather. And, and that was the start of it. Uh, the fact is that the family has grown and the, the the situation of the original house with the original shed uh, has really been prohibitive of what they've been able to do to make the house everything they'd like it to be for their family. Okay. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Don. <laughs> Mr. Wiegand, I was at the last postponed meeting. Did you talk to uh, the building department about this? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, I have had, I've had phone conversations and became aware of the requirement for three cars maximum, and, and that's where I got that information. All right. Cause I thought you and the building department were, were going to work something out. That's the last I remember of, of your appearance last time. That you, you apparently did not, weren't able to do that. Is that correct? Well, this is a new application that to put this garage on here. Uh, you know, the, any, anything prior to that, uh, I'm not aware of. Uh, John is my son. I'm John's father. And John is on is here with us tonight, and I'm not aware of any other items that needed to be straightened out. I, I think we're clear with the building department in, in regarding any any other issues. All right, thank you. Did you need something, Lauren? Well, are you going to mention, I didn't know, you said raise your hand and you <laughs> say go ahead. So I didn't know if I was just supposed to go ahead or wait for you. So at any rate, John, I personally, I have no problem uh, with this request because it is addition to the house. So it'll look as good as the house looks. And uh, you've got plenty of property. You're screened from the front. Even if it was for the back part, uh, it wouldn't matter. Um, I personally have no problem. So is there anybody else that wants to speak to this matter? Uh, we'll listen to that. If there's not, if one of the members wants to make a motion, that'd be fine. I'd like to try to make a motion. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, as usual, if um, I leave something out or, or you need to add anything, um, I'll look for your hand and stop talking so that you can add. Um, Don Walker, you too. Okay, so um, like Tammy said, this is new, so be patient with me here, guys. Um, in the matter of ZBA case number AB 2026, John Wiegand, 4454 Maybe Road, 0930100007. I would move that the petitioner's request for one variance, zoning ordinance number 78, article 27, section 27.02, lot size over 2.5 acres, number one, a 664 square foot variance above the allowed 1900 square foot maximum floor area of all accessory buildings to build an attached 1364 square foot garage in addition to an existing 1120 square foot detached garage and an 80 foot 80 square foot shed be granted because the petitioner did demonstrate that the following standards for variances have been met in this case and they set forth facts which show that the petitioner shows the following practical difficulty the practical difficulty the petitioner has stated is that the family has grown and um, he has a, I believe you said a daughter or someone in the home with some medical issues that um, needs to be able to get to her car. Um, the other practical difficulty on the property is that um, um, he has 2.5 acres. Um, the neighbors in that particular neighborhood are far away from each other. The following are exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions that are applicable to the property involved and do not apply generally to other properties in the same district or zone. Again, the house is on 2.5 acres. Um, in a pro uh, excuse me, um, having enough room to build it is not an issue. There's plenty of room on that property. Um, it doesn't pose a hazard to anyone. The variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right possessed by other properties in the same solar district. Based on the following facts, that there is a person in the home with a medical issue and um, the family is growing and they just need more space. Um, the granting of this variance or modification will not be materially detrimental to the public welfare or materially injurious to the property or other improvements in such zone or district in which the proper in which the property is located based on the following findings of fact um, it does not show a problem for um, fire and it, um, what's the word? I'm sorry. Public safety to get in and out of there. There's plenty of room on that property for the addition. I'll second that motion uh, with the addition that uh, currently there is only a one car garage and this uh, will allow to uh, park the other cars that the people have inside. So it makes okay. it much Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion by the board members? We need to have public comment. No further discussion, please call the vote. Is there any public comment? <clears throat> yes, you do that. Is there anyone on the site that has any comment on this matter? Any emails? No emails. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, I don't see any. I'm going to have her take the roll. Uh, Lucy, can you please uh, mute until we get to you? Thank you. She's first. <laughs> oh, Lucy, you're first. <laughs> <laughs> Kosher Zinsky. Hey. Yes. Walker. Yes. Durham. Can't hear him. I think he said no. I can't hear him. Let me try to tell him. Just a second, uh, Dan. Is your phone on mute, Dan? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. My vote is yes. You voted yes. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry. Okay, got it. Thank you. And Yaros. My vote is yes. So we have a quorum. We have enough people that voted for it. Yep. You're good to go, Mr. Wigan. Good luck. Motion carries. Thank you very much, members. Appreciate it. And to answer your question, Lauren, I, I was only there. If it starts getting convoluted, go you. We're doing good. Keep going. Okay, next we have uh, case AB 2020-07, Ryan Dosky at 965 Pine Tree Road, West 0910-203-001. Petitioner is seeking... Three variances from zoning order 78, Article 6, Section 604, Zone R3. A 21 foot rear yard setback variance from required 35 foot to add a second story addition, 14 foot from the rear property line. Uh, Article 2703, uh, Section 2703C, 32 foot rear yard setback variance from the required 32 foot with projection allowance to erect a second story balcony. Terrace zero feet from the rear property line and uh, section 27, I mean, article 27, section 27, 17B, wetback setback, wetland setbacks, hmm. uh, a 9.2 wetland setback variance from the required 25 foot to erect a second story balcony terrace 15.8 feet from a wetland. Uh, I have one. Uh, comment about this before we start uh, we have um, our legal department has looked at this and um, oh, I'm trying to find it here now and the, the question we have is whether or not you actually where the property if, if it's actually owned by you or not and the uh recommendation is that the uh property owners seeking the variance to resolve the ownership issues related to the discrepancy in the plat map and the county maps prior to any request being granted if the applicant can show he owns free fee title to the parcel based upon a valid survey or a circuit court judgment, it would be appropriate. It would then be appropriate for the ZBA to consider a variance. So, as of right now, the way I understand it, go ahead, Tammy. When we calculated the variances, we did it from his property line, which is the platted, and it does not involve any of the accreted land. So that was, if he wanted to include that in his calculation, he'd have to prove it. But in order to have this go through faster, the setbacks were calculated from the platted line, not the accreted land. So I guess it's up to Mr. Dasky as to what he wants to do at this point. Am I right, Tammy? Um, no, he actually, when he submitted his application, he submitted it 
calculating his setbacks from the property line, which he has the right to. He did not, he voluntarily decided he wouldn't look at it all the way to the water. He can do that later, but to, to if he can get the variances as advertised, um, it, it is just to his property line, with you taking into account that there is additional land that he has not determined yet, but he's not calculating his setbacks from that line. He's calculating it from what we, what we concretely know is his land. Okay. Well, then, the, so what we're looking at right now is a 20-foot rear yard setback variance from the 35, a 30-foot variance from the 32-foot, and then a 9.2 foot variance from the 25. Uh, that's a lot of variances for a setback myself, but I'm one member. Mr. Ryan, do you, uh, Ms. Dasky, would you like to comment? Uh, yes. Can everybody hear me? Okay, basically, uh, this, I was caught by surprise with this, uh, with my lot line not being directly at water's edge. And there is a legal issue that, that doesn't involve this that I'm gonna look into after, I mean, in the future with this. But as far as this variance is concerned, basically the issue that my family's run across is that we, you know, we have two, two young children and my wife and I are considering more children, but any kind of decision like that needs this, this house needs to have a another bedroom added to it in order to accomplish this, and that's all part of this variance package. Okay, good. Uh, comments from the other members of the board here. Okay, so when I was over at your house, Mr. Dusky, on Saturday, you and I talked a minute or two. Um, and where you have it staked out, right, is where you want to put the, is that correct? Okay. Don't, why, I, I guess I'm going to ask a silly question then. Why is this a problem um, with, the, with the property um, past the lake when he's got this, he's got it staked out where he wants to do, I don't, I'm not understanding what's going on with this, I guess. Well, apparently the question is um, that whether or not he actually owns the property out to the lake. You know, right now those uh, variances are measured from the actual property line, which if you look on the drawing is quite a dis difference from what the lake property is there. So if that was resolved right now, there probably wouldn't be a whole lot of issues here, but we don't know what the resolution will be. <laughs> Again, I mean, I did extensive research on this and there is not an answer. The township is not saying that it's not his. We're saying we can't, we can't conclusively come up with it. So with that in mind, if you're looking at the property and the land beyond it, you have, a, you have a small piece of land and then a lake. Um, you know, and setbacks are there for life safety and, and the preservation of rights. And so with what he's asking for, I would just ask the, the ZBA to entertain, um, even though it's a large setback, would anything ever be on that other side that would cause a problem? Okay, so Tammy, then my question is, would it be in the best interest of the petitioner and the township if we wait to see what the outcome of the property lines are? I mean, really, it's your judgment call, but what would you accomplish with that? Again, if you're looking at the property and beyond his property line is some land that at one point in time was water and is now land um, that is attached to the lake bottom. Um, would that amount of land that's come out beyond his property line be enough for somebody to build a structure that he'd then be sitting on top of their structure? 
I guess is what it comes down to. Is is you know when you're doing your setbacks, you you know you've got a deck can be 10 feet from a rear property line, further from from wetlands, but 10 feet from a rear property line. So if he is at zero instead of 10 feet, is there anything that's going to be the, on the other side of the property line that his deck sitting at zero is going to be intrusive to? I, I, and I mean, it's really your decision, but I'm just trying to summarize it better for you. Okay, the question I have here is, do we know the dimensions from actually the request to the water line? Do we know what those dimensions are? Ryan, do you remember those? I don't know that I have them in my file. I know at one point in time you had them. Do you happen to have them handy? So you're asking for the distance between what the county perceives as my property line to the lake? If you were to be able to prove the property was yours, what would your setbacks have been? That's all right. I'm going to let Brian answer that one. I think he has, he probably knows that better than me. He's Brian Campbell is uh, my representative and he's going to be doing the addition. If, if this all goes to plan. It's 30 feet from 29.8 feet from the house to the water. If he was to own the land, all of the land. That's what we were looking for. Thank you. Mr. Walker. Mr. Zaski, uh, I want to get back to the practical difficulty you have here. You indicated uh, you, you intend to enlarge your family. Is that, is that basically what you said? I don't want to misquote you. Uh, yes, we intend on having more children, and we believe it would be difficult to do so in the house as is. So basically, this addition is adding more space, second, another bedroom is, is our plan. And what's the square footage of the house now? Sorry, give me a second. Sure. Brian, you know that answer offhand? Um, it is a total of 2,900 square feet. It does not have a basement. Okay. And how many square feet are you going to add on? I'm not a much of a mathematician here or an architect. What will this addition add to the square footage? 444. How long have you lived there, Mr. Dasky? About a year and a half. It was October. I moved in October of uh, 2018. And the reason I'm asking these questions is because these are, to me, very large variances, extremely large variances. And I'm looking for something to hang my hat on. If, if I want to vote your way, I'm looking for that. So thank you. Okay, if you're saying that the proposed house will be uh, 29.8 feet, so almost 30 feet from the water line, um, and uh, the first variance request was uh, you needed a variance from the required 35 foot, so you would need somewhere around, right around five foot, two inches, uh, instead of the 21 rear, if in fact you own the property. Yes, that's correct. And I would just like to note that what, 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 whatever happens here tonight, I do plan on pursuing this legally just for my, I mean, we, we intend on this, making this a forever home, but this is obviously an issue that I need to pursue 
for the future purposes of resale. Okay, thank you for that. Also, the uh, second request you had was a 32 foot yard setback variance from the required 32 feet. Uh, if in fact you owned to the water, would it still be uh, like a five? Let's see, it'd be about a seven foot, no, uh, two foot, two inch uh, variance. You know what, I'm going to have to have Brian answer that one. Does that sound correct, Brian? I'm sorry, I didn't catch, I didn't catch the whole thing. Uh, if you own the land... The question was, the second request for a variance was a 32-foot rear yard setback variance from the required 32-foot with the projection allowance to erect a second story balcony terrace zero feet from the property line but in fact if the water line was your property line what would be the variance required that's the question yeah it's 29.8 total and then the the patio is 14 feet so he would have a uh, 15.8 less of a variance. Okay, so 15.8 feet less, so it'd be 32 minus 15.8 would be the request for the second one, if in fact you had the property, if we're looking yeah. to the water. Okay, the next request, it says wetland setbacks, a 9.2 foot wetland setback variance from the required 25. That hasn't changed because I believe that one's still going to the water anyway. Okay, so in essence, we have a, even though it says a 21 foot rear yard setback variance, that's to the property line traditionally, but to the actual water line, it would only be a two foot, two inch request. And then for the second one, it would be uh, whatever, 32 minus 15.8. Let's see. So that would be point two. That would be a 15.2, the way I figured it, uh, variance request to the water, if in fact, you know, that comes that you own the property. But in fact, you're, I don't see anybody else building on that piece of property because it's attached to yours. So, and then the last request would be the same, the 9.2 wetland setback variance. Is this correct, Tammy? Sounds good to me. Okay, what we're doing here today, though, you know, we would have to okay a 20 foot, 21 foot rear yard setback variance uh, from the required 35 foot, and then a 32 foot rear yard variance from the 32, and then the 9.2 foot wetland setback variance. Those will, will have to be that's what the request is, and that's what we have to vote on, even though in reality, the line's much farther back to the water and the request is less if in fact he owned the property. If we can't settle that, then we'd have to postpone this until in fact we find out whether he owns the property or not. That's what it is. Uh, yes. Isn't the gentleman's large variances in part because he is willingly giving up rights to ownership of that property at this time. That's why the numbers are so high because he's not claiming the property that he may get in litigation at some future time. 
I don't, is, is he giving up the rights? I don't know that I would say it that way. I mean, he chose to proceed with just including that, with giving you the facts of it's, it's unknown legally at this point, whether it's his property or not, which can take some time. So he chose to proceed with going just to the property line and giving you the facts of that land being next to water and, and everything that we've discussed. I should have phrased it differently. I said gave, giving up the right to the pro, to ownership of the property for purposes of the variance tonight. That's why the numbers are so high, correct? Correct. He wants basically to get started on his bill. Correct. Thank you. I'm still on it though. I think this does this periodically. When okay, is there anybody else to speak to this matter um, other than the board members? We have no emails. Okay. Okay, so board members, um, you know, it's your pleasure. Do you uh, want to try a variance? Do you want to get more information? Or what would you like to do at this point? Mr. Chair, I have a question for Mr. Dosky. Go ahead. Um, does he believe that the height of the addition that he's going to put up on top of the end of the garage there where it's going to block the view of anybody else? as far as the lake goes? <clears throat> no, I do not. Uh, the only, the only, I, I really don't. I mean, my, my neighbors across the street would be the only ones that any kind of a view might change, but they are also on the lake and they have a view of the lake off their back, of the, of the back property. And they, I really don't think the view is going to affect anybody. And most of my neighbors are aware of what we're doing and haven't spoke no will against it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the question is now is um, would somebody want to make a uh, motion or do you want more facts to make a motion or what do you want to do? Raise your hand. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Dan. I'll make a motion for purposes of discussion. Okay. In the matter of ZBA case number AB 2020-07, Ryan Dosky, 965 Pine Tree Road West, Sidwell number 09-10-203-001. I would move that the petitioner's request, he is requesting three variances. Number one is the 21 foot rear yard setback variance from the required 35 foot to add a second story addition, 14 feet from the rear property line. Uh, number two, Article 27, Section 27.03C, a 32-foot rear yard setback variance from the required 32-foot with projection allowance to erect a second-story balcony terrace, zero feet from the rear property line. And the third one is Article 27, Section 27.17B, wetland setbacks, a 9.2-foot wetland setback variance from the required 25 foot to erect a second story balcony terrace, 15.8 feet from a wetland. I would move to be granted because while they are large in size, if there are some changes in delineated ownership of the property and legal ownership, uh, they may not have been this large. Um, the petitioner did show the practical difficulty exists in this case. He would like to enlarge his home. He has stated for the record, it's going to be his forever home. Uh, we have had cases 
where people have asked for these only to turn around and sell the property. That is not going to happen here. The neighbors apparently have no issue with this. And it would tend, at least in, the, in my eyes, to bring the, prop, the petitioner's property more into line with other properties in the area. Uh, the following are exceptional, extraordinary circumstances. Those lots down in that area, as we all know very well, are strangely shaped and were planted a long, long time ago. Um, they involve quite often conditions that do not apply generally to other properties in the same district. Uh, the variance would be helpful for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right possessed by other property owners in the same zone or vicinity, based again on the fact the lot is small. He, want, he has a nice size house there now, um, but he would like to enlarge it as his family enlarge, is hopefully going to enlarge and bring it more into line with other properties in the area. The granting of the variance or modification will not be materially detrimental to the public welfare or materially injurious to the property or improvements in such zone or district. It will again make the house more fall into line with other houses. It will not imply light, air, or, or impair rather, an adequate supply of light or air to any other properties. It will not unreasonably increase the congestion in the public areas. There will be no fire department issues. I believe I've seen a letter from the fire marshal to that effect. And it will not unreasonably diminish or impair established property values within the surrounding area. In any, any other, or in any other respect, impair the public health, safety, comfort, morals, or of the township in any way. I'll support that for further discussion. Uh, Don, do you have anything further? No? <laughs> Lucy? Okay, then we'll uh, call for a vote. Public comment? I asked for public if there was anybody to talk about this. I didn't hear anything. Sorry, that was, that was before the motion. I apologize. Okay, go ahead, Lynn. The no problem. Do you want to head call the vote? Yep. Durham. Did you hear, 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 did you hear me? Did you hear I don't me? think so. Try it again. Durham. Where'd he go again? He was doing good. Tammy, do you want to call the vote? We did. <laughs> we called Durham. Durham. My vote is yes. Kosherzinski. Yes. Walker. No. Yaros. Yes. Motion passes. Good luck, Mr. Dasky, and thank you for coming, Mr. Campbell. Thank you. Next, we have case AB 202008, Patrick Ray, vacant parcel on Cushing Street 0903 278027. Petitioner is requesting eight variants from Zoning Ordinance 78, Article 27, 2701, C1B lot width 60 to 65 foot. A first one is a 2.8 foot side yard setback variance required eight foot to build a house. 5.2 foot from the side yard property line south. Then number two is a 2.63 foot side yard setback variance from the required eight foot to build a house 5.37 from the side yard property line on to the north. Article uh, six, section 604 zone R3, a 9.36 front yard setback variance from required 30 foot to build a house 20.64 from the front property line on the lake side. A, and then four is a 14.99 rear yard setback variance from required 35 foot to build a house 20.01 foot from the rear property line, which is the roadside. And then a 21.36 front yard setback variance from the required 30 foot to build a deck 
8.64 feet from the front pro the front property line, which is Lakeside. A 15.98% lot coverage variance from the allowed 25% for a total coverage of 40.98%. And then Article 27, Section 2717B, a 4.3 foot, a uh, 36 foot wetland setback variance required 25 foot to build a house 20.64 feet from the wetland. Article 27, Sections 2703C3B, 11.6 foot water's edge setback variance from the required 20 foot to build a hot deck, 8.64 feet from the water's edge. Okay. Um, see comments by the board. I just want to point out that the petitioner had um, amended his his um, request, so it, it's fine. We advertised for larger, but he had um, there was an email. We just got it, so we just emailed it to the ZBA members where he has reduced what he is asking for. So he might want to um, during his presentation um, address how he's reduced some of those numbers. Okay, I would ask the petitioner to uh, give us that information. Hi there, Patrick Ray, 1231 Lacrosse Trail, Oxford. Um, can everybody hear me? Okay. So uh, I've been working with uh, Matt Danaskis, uh, who I believe is on, and uh, Mike Riddle, and uh, Rising Construction. And uh, in, in coming up and determining the request that we needed, uh, we just took a look at the uh, lot one approval that uh, the board uh, sometime back. Mike would have to uh, uh, speak to exactly when that was. Um, and what we used, I actually have on a board, but because of our strange forum tonight, can't really do much with. But um, I guess I can speak to numbers. The goal here between, you know, Mr. Danaskis, Mr. Riddle, and Rice and Construction and, and us is uh, uni you know, uniformity. Uh, we originally were slightly closer uh, to the water, and our concern was that we would be blocking the view for a proposed house on um, property number one. Uh, so the idea is to, you know, in, in, in a way, just make sure all of those on that cove there are in line so nobody is impeding too close or too far and blocking the views from one side to the other. Um, a hardship there, if you've been there and seen it, um, is definitely lot size and our grade. Uh, it, it brings challenges and uh, hence the request, obviously. Um, this, this home is uh, is for my wife and I and our four kids. We've been searching on Lake Orion. We have a lot of friends on Lake Orion uh, for a long time, and uh, we just can't find anything that's going to work for us. So the build, the new build, is, is the most sensible option. Um, regarding the um, uh, size changes that uh, Tammy uh, spoke to, um, I just, I just didn't want the house to be uh, further ahead than the proposed house uh, for lot number one. So we scaled that back a bit and made the house uh, envelope slightly smaller um, and uh, gave a little more breathing room uh, on the two side lot lines, uh, you know, to accommodate what we would need to for a proper watershed. Thank you. Okay, what I'm really interested in is what numbers have you changed? from the original request. Yes, sir. Uh, well, what we've done is, um, if you look at uh, the approval before on property one, the approved number is 2611 uh, at the start. Number one, oh, sir, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not interested in what the approval was for the other. What I'm interested in is what your request is. Because we look at every parcel differently. We look at it individually. And what I need to know is, what your numbers are so now from the house to uh, what we presume is the water line or the property line 26.61 okay could you look at your list and then give me an order on you know the way it was advertised so i can kind of get an idea of what it was and what it is do you want me to hold it up to the camera Good. No, I just want the numbers. Like the num the first one 
is a 2.8 foot side yard variance request. If there's something different, I want to know what it is. Number two, what it is. Number three, number four, and so on. Understood. So the uh, uh, number one originally uh, was to build a house 5.20 feet from the property line on the south side. It is now 5.32. Number two, the original north property line request was 5.37 feet, and we are now 5.59. Um, number three was 20.64 from the property line. We actually got slightly closer to the road here uh, as the property's next door, we're keeping things in line is now 18.04. That is an increase, by the way. Um, number four, rear yard setback variance from the 35 feet to the house 20.01 from the rear property line. We are now 26 feet. Number five is uh, the deck at 8.64. We are now 10.12. And to be completely honest with you, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I, I couldn't tell you the percentage of lot coverage because I haven't done that calculation, uh, nor do I know or can speak to uh, wetland setbacks because I, uh, I don't know what those are set at currently. Well, in my case, and I'm only speaking for my vote, my one vote, I looked at the house next door the way the rocks were and everything. And so, you know, I don't know if you can get between the, re the buildings, no matter what you do on your side, in case there was some kind of a fire or something. I don't know, emergency vehicles needed to get in there. I don't know how they would do it. Um, my big, biggest problem is this is just one heck of a lot of variances. I mean, I look at the houses and the street and everything. And I, this thing is almost totally covering this lot. You're asking to be, um, what is it? 4.36 foot wetland variance setback from acquired 25 foot to be 20 foot from uh, the wetland. And the last one to build a deck 8.64 feet from the water's edge. To me, that's really close. I mean, I have problems with, with the, I had problems with the other house, but I have a lot of problems just generally with this this many variances for that lot. And that's, again, only me. So I'll let the other members see what, what they... Yes. Go ahead, Lucy. With regard to... Um first responders or fire people getting to the property. Um, there is a memo here from Jeff Williams, the fire marshal, that states the fire department has reviewed the proposed document and has no concerns. So it's in the packet. I just wanted to throw that in. Right, I saw that, but, you know, again, I'm looking at the elevations here and everything and the way they have the rocks between the homes. I don't know how they get down there. Now, Dan knows more about this stuff than I do. What do you think, Dan? You're, you're exactly right with the slope and the rocks. I don't know that you get guys carrying any gear in between those places. Okay. That was just one example. Now, um, board members, do you have questions as to these other variances? I just want to point I'm out. Sure. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Ray. Yeah. I didn't see you. That's okay. No problem. Um, when you say the rocks, are you referring to, to the house that's next door to property one? Because my property doesn't have a home on either side of it. Well, that's the, that's the one I was looking at going down. Now, I don't know how it's going to be next to you. It's a question I have, I guess. Well, sure. And, that, and, that, and that's, you know, that's why Ryson and I are working together there to prevent that kind of congestion. Um, but we don't, 
you know, we don't have that problem on this particular parcel. I think you're thinking of the parcel that's next to uh, property one. Question for the petitioner. Yes, sir. I think he heard me, but he doesn't see me. Um, Dan Durham. Question I have for you, when we see, or speaking for myself, when I see this many variances on that small of a lot, it has the feel of an overbuild, not necessarily for the neighborhood, but for the lot. Is that something you've considered? You know, I may I speak? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. If 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 we took our if we took what we were allowed to do here, um, we wouldn't have much of a home to build at all. I think no matter how big the house is, or or even even if we build a home that's you know realistic for today's day and age and the values that we see on Lake Orion and what people are are looking for ultimately and what we're looking for, um, you'd be asking for this many variances close to this many variances no matter what. It's the, the problem that we have on this particular property, and I'm sure you've seen it, is the grade and our side yards. And without most of these, I mean, even if you adjusted the numbers to, to one way or the other, there would be this quantity of variances at, at least close. I was sitting down at the bottom of that lot looking up, trying to figure how you would navigate from the back of that house to the front on the inside because of that fall off. What do you mean by on the inside? Uh, between the houses? I mean, if, you live, if you're living inside the house, the, the lot falls off to such a degree, the road side of the house is going to be dramatically elevated from the lake side. Mm -hmm. yeah, that would be correct. If, if, if you look up the street, uh, one, two, those, all three houses are, are, are built in that fashion, especially the one that's existing there. You, you have to, you know, put, put a little bit of retainment on the sides and it will, it, it'll be an interesting basement, but that's what we are dealing with, with that piece of land. But most of the homes on that street have that, um, or at least on that side, sir, have that, uh, that, that challenge. Thank you. I have a question for Tammy. Yes, sir. Um, looking through the information, did I see that because there's nothing, no buildings on it now, the petitioner can pick what is the front yard and what is the backyard? Yes, you are correct. So I was incorrect all these years when I thought that the front yard had to, build, had to border on a street. Correct. I mean, there's certain parts of the ordinance that says that the street side is the front, um, but not when it comes to calculating the the setbacks. So, um, yes, you can choose the lake is your front or the road is your front, and that can affect your setbacks. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the other um, question I have is, the original setback from the road was going to be 20.64, and now you're proposing 18 foot. Um, 20.64 was small to start with. I looked at the houses down the street who similar type setbacks, and man, they're they're right out to the road with their trucks and their cars. Most cars are larger than that, or trucks are for sure. Um, my question is, you know, can we get the 20 foot back? Absolutely. I'd be willing to concede on that. No problem at all. What is the square footage of your house proposed? Uh, Mike, uh, I know you can, can you hear me, Mike? Uh, what is the original square footage on that particular unit? Do we know? Hi, this is Mike Riddle, uh, Rising Construction. My address is 15299 Pine Ridge Drive, Holly, Michigan. And the answer is that is 2,700 square feet total. Thanks, Mike. OK, 
Okay, thank you. Um, and if you got the 20 foot back uh, from the road, would that change the square footage at all? Well, yeah, certainly. I mean, what I could do is, uh, you know, we, I'm trying to have an attached garage here because a detached garage would be impossible, um, as you can see. So I would just try to, you know, take some space and move things around and, you know, make some compromises. Lauren, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, the, the, you know, if you get that 20 foot, that settles my one question. Um, 2,700 square foot is not overly huge building on, on the lake. I mean, I don't, I guess, you know, that that's uh, within reason, I think. But my, my issues are fairly much solved except for the deck being that close to the water's edge but I'll wait and hear from the rest of the board Don do you have any oh sorry go ahead Lucy um just with regard to being so close to the lake um we've had I believe there was a house and I remember this because it's close to where I live on Heights Road, where it was about the same distance as this is going to be. Um, if not, I think even the Heights Road one was even closer than this. Just some information. Okay, so what members, what are your feelings on, do you have questions for the petitioner uh, before we bring this to a vote, if there is a vote? Go ahead, Lucy. Practical difficulty, Mr. Ray, did you, um, I, I didn't hear you give one. Well, I, you know, I would think that if you give, if you see the lot and you look at it, there's all kinds of practical difficulty. Um, you know, we've got grade issues, we've got setback issues, we've got the size of the lot issues. And I, and I think that, you know, originally we wanted to be in a 3,200 square foot home you know, four children, um, and we've already made concessions to get to this point. Um, for me personally, um, I wouldn't want to go any smaller. So that that in and of itself is kind of my practical difficulty. Okay, thank you. Well, one of the questions I have right now is, what will be the lot coverage? Because whatever we vote on will have to be on record as to whatever it is so we have to know what the lot coverage you're proposing is with the changes you made Tammy, go ahead um so with what he had done he had moved around the home um and so his setbacks change and with the exception i mean he said that he you know could do something to make the uh, one setback go back into the 20 range. I don't, the lot coverage will change slightly unless I'm missing something, but it was already calculated. And if all of the other variances are, you decide to grant them, then granting the extreme, um, and I say extreme just because we always advertise for the largest. So if he's saying in order to meet that 20 foot that he has to decrease the house slightly, then you're giving a little bit more on lot coverage than he actually needs, but he's bound by the setbacks that you're you're going to be granting if you grant them. If that does that make sense? The question I had is like in number four, the house uh, number four states a fourteen point nine nine rear yard setback variance from the required thirty five foot to build a house twenty foot. Now he's proposing 26 foot. That's going to change the coverage considerably. 
So I think we need to have an exact number here. I'm not, I'm, Lauren, did you find the email that Lynn had sent that had stri stricken and put in the setbacks that he is now asking? No, I didn't. Go ahead, Don. I, I did receive that about 4 o'clock or quarter after 4. And I kind of did a rough math, mathematical sketch, and it seemed to me it was almost even. Mm -hmm. the, the deletions and the additions, if you put it all together, and again, I didn't, I didn't graph, it, graph it out for each specific one, but the square footage, the, 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 it seems to be about the same to me. I, I'll bet you if, you, if, if someone has a calculator and does the calculations, I'll bet it's pretty close to whatever it was before that, I believe. Go ahead, uh, Patrick. Thank you. Uh, just, just doing some quick looking here, uh, my lot coverage would uh, decrease. Um, I'm taking six feet off the back and giving six, giving two feet approximately. I'm, I'm speaking in approximately number two, but two feet on the front. So I would think that I would be reducing the amount of coverage. Okay, that's what I thought, just looking at, you know, what you're proposing. Um, and so you would be actually under the 40.98%, but 40.98, you wouldn't be over it for sure. No, sir, I'd be considerably under it. Not, I, when I say considerably, I, I mean, I don't want to shoot from the hip and put a number on record here, but I, I'm definitely in the mid-30s, mid to high-30s. Okay, Cammy, do you think that we should have that calculated before we vote? You know, it, it depends how you feel about the fact that if, if all the other variances are being granted and he's held on where he can have his distance to each property line, then are you comfortable with granting the lot coverage as he asked versus the actual calculation because he can't get any closer to any of the property lines than the variances you're granting. Okay, well, you know, in, in my case, and I'm only one vote, um, if in fact he changes the uh, number three request to uh, back to the 20.64, I think it was, on three, um, yeah, 20.64 from the prop front property line, which stays then at uh, request of 9.36 front yard setback bearings. I, I, I don't have a whole lot of problems with this since it's only a 2,700 square foot home. But again, I'm one vote. So uh, I guess we can go ahead and somebody wants to make a motion, bring that up. Just for your information, Patrick, I can't make a motion. <laughs> I've got to wait for a member to make a motion. And that's what I'm waiting for. Or if you need more information, ask for that information to, you know, make your judgment, whatever you want to do. What happens if nobody makes a motion? Oh, well, somebody will have to make a motion. I don't know if it'll be in your favor or not favor, but somebody's got to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. If you were a board member, you could do it. Might want to think about joining the board. Everybody can come over to my <laughs> office. Go ahead, Dan. Is Mr. Walker working on the calculations? I tell him what Mr. Walker's working on. Yeah, I was working on, on the on the calculations, but I'm not having I'm not a good mathematician, so uh... motion, no. This isn't right. Just one to go. Uh anybody? Uh, See what what this setup is I can't kick anybody, so I can't <laughs> I can't get a more uh motion going. We're going to be slow and quiet, so keep your ears open. Ready to, ready to go. 
in a matter of AB case 2020-08, Patrick Ray, vacant parcel on Cushing Street, Sidwell 09-03-278-027, Petitioner is requesting eight variances from Zoning Ordinance 78, Article 27, Section 27.01, B1B, lot width 60 to 65 feet, a 2.68 side yard setback variance from the required eight foot to build a house 5.32 feet from the side yard property line to the south. Number two is a 2.41 side yard setback variance from the required eight foot to build a house 5.59 foot from the side property line to the north. Article six, section 6.04, zoned R3. The first one, I believe is the one we changed. Did we change the numbers on three or four? Uh, we left the same on three. Okay, then a 9.36 front yard setback variance from the required 30 foot to build a house 2 point or 20.64 feet from the front property line on the lake side. No, he changed that forward. one to 26 foot, Dan. 26 feet. Yeah. Okay, what was the change then? It wasn't a 5.0 foot. 5.05 foot change. It was, um, let's see, 26 foot from 35. So it was what, would that be nine foot variance? Patrick, is that nine. what that is? Uh, well, you A number, uh, number four. Uh, number was it nine, nine foot variance? I'm on number three. Number three is the same. 20.64. That hasn't changed. All right, let me make sure I read it into the record. A 5.05 foot front yard setback variance from the required 30 foot to build a house 24.95 feet from the front property line on the lake side. Now, number four, what are the numbers? It's, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, you're on number three? Yeah, you're not on number three. I thought I just passed number three. Yeah. No, you you didn't state it right. You go go through number three again. Number three is the uh, section six hundred four zoned R three a nine point yes. three six. Okay, that's the one you got to read. Nine point three six. All right, a nine point three six foot front yard setback variance from the required thirty foot to build a house twenty point six four feet from the front property line on the lakeside. Okay, that that's correct. Good. That's correct. All right, let's keep going. A 16.9 foot rear yard setback variance from the required 35 foot to build a house 18.04 feet from the rear property line. Number five is a 19.88 foot front yard setback variance from the required 30 foot to build a deck 10.12 feet from the front property line on the lake side. Number six is a 15.98 lot percent lot coverage variance above the allowed 25% for a lot coverage of 40.98%. Article 27 point, section 27.17B variance to request number seven is a 0 0.05 foot wetland setback variance from the required 25 feet to build a house 24.95 feet from a wetland. And number eight is Article 27, Section 27.03 P3B, a nine foot eight, excuse me, nine foot eight, eight foot water's edge setback variance from the required 20 feet to build a deck 10.12 feet from the water's edge. I would request Sir? Yes? Would you uh, kindly repeat number four as you proposed? 
I was going to have them go through that and then make the corrections at the end. Yeah, sorry, sir. Go ahead, Dan. All right. All right. I was request in this case the variance is just stated be granted. And I will get to the information here in just a minute. The petitioner does show the following practical difficulty. In this case, he has a very odd shaped lot. Uh, there is a severe pitch from back to front. Um, it borders on a lake. He is not building, as it turns out, an oversized house. He's going through all these hoops to get a moderately sized house for himself and his four children. The following are exceptional and extraordinary circumstances. Again, it's the lot, the lot, and then the lot. The shape, the size, and the elevation. The variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right. The gentleman has stated that he very much wants to live on Lake Orion. He has found a place to do it. Uh, we encourage people to invest in our community, and that is what he is seeking to do. The granting of a variance or modification will not be materially detrimental to the public welfare or interest to the property or improvement in such donor districts. Because he is going to essentially be fitting in with housing around him, and he'll have a lot on each side that I eventually will have a house similar to what he has now. It will not impair any supply of light, air, or anything else required by the people in the community. It will not unreasonably increase the congestion in public streets. It will not increase the danger of fire or endanger the public safety. The fire marshal has weighed in that he has no issues. It will not unreasonably diminish or impair established property values. If anything, it may increase property values. It will not in any respect impair the public health, safety, comfort, or morals. I'll support that, Dan, if you'll, well, just for clarification, on Article 604 zoned R3, number 3, a 9.36 foot front yard setback variance from the required 30 foot to build a house 20.64 feet from the front property, and that's the lakeside. And number four, a four, uh, it would be a, I believe, and correct me if I'm right, Patrick, a 20.98 foot rear yard setback variance to build a house uh, 20.01 feet from the rear property line. Is that correct? Um, at, the, at the close. So, I mean, to build a house 26 foot from the rear property line. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. If you will include uh, those two changes, I'll support this. I'd be happy to include them if we're sure they're correct. And the email okay, number, the... Yeah, number three is the same one that, the, that he proposed. And the number four, yeah. it changed from a 20-foot from the rear property line to 26-foot. So you would add 6-foot to the 14.99. Uh, so it would be 20 foot nine eight because it was oh one so practitioners in agreement i'll agree to those changes are those agreed to patrick yes sir okay uh any further discussion by the board is there any discussion uh the motion's been made and it's been seconded but we didn't allow the public to speak on this first so if there's somebody wants to speak go ahead tammy I'm sorry, I know we were just like beating it with a stick here, but number four, I just need to understand correctly because originally he was asking for 14.99 foot rear yard setback variance, and then he modified it to be 16.96 rear yard setback variance. And if those numbers are still the same, then you're granting a number larger than what was advertised. Well, it's my understanding, as he was reading it, number four, that he was asking for 26 foot from the rear property line. That's Am I correct, Patrick? Well, yes, 26, 26 foot from the rear property line on a 35 foot uh, requirement would be, uh, what, nine feet? Uh, so could we come up with that number so that the motion contains what he's actually set back? Well, what would it be, Tammy? 
<laughs> he, made, he wants to build a house 26 foot from the real property line on a 20 on a 35 foot. Give me a minute. That, 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 that's nine yeah. feet. Nine feet. I mean, that's what I come up with. But okay, so then I, I would just for for simplicity and clarification. If number four, keeping it in the verbiage we normally have, if I'm understanding it correctly, the number four would be a nine foot rear yard setback variance from the required 35 feet to build a house 26 feet from the rear property line. So if we could clarify that that is what it is. That's correct. Thank you. That's correct. Thank you. Which is the lessening of the yep. variance. Yep. When, yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, any questions by the board or we'll call a vote? Any thumbs up, questions, anything? Okay. Please call vote. Nope. Walker? No. Durham? Yes. Kosher Zinski? Lucy, you were muted. Yes. Yaros? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, sir, and uh, thank you for making those modifications. My pleasure. Thank you. Good luck. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, next, next we have uh, public comment, if anybody wants to make public comment. I can't see anybody else except for the people here, so if somebody else wants to do it. Oh, Mike Riddle. Is there any public comments, Tammy? Um, anybody yes, wants Mr. to make it? Yes, Mr. Riddle has his hand up. Okay. Good evening. I just wanted to say thank you and that Patrick and I and, and Matt have worked hard trying to uh, make this development uniform and work together. And, and I think Patrick and I are going to be able to help develop the product real nice in Lake Orion. I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for those comments. Okay, any uh, further, then we'll go to communications uh, the, regarding the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act. Uh, it's there for everybody to read on the board, so please do so. Committee reports, we don't have any that I know of. Member, members' comments at this time, any comments by the members? No comments? Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. All support. Okay, all in favor? Uh, we'll call that. Call. Okay. Let's go, uh, Kosher Zinski. One more time. Lucy, we're backwards. Yes. <laughs> Durham. Yes. Walker. In keeping with my voting all night, I should vote no, but I'll vote yes. <laughs> and Yaros. Yaros. I was muted. Yaros. Yes. Thank you very much. Motion passes. We're done with this. <laughs> Thank Go you, forward. everyone, for your cooperation. Thank you. And, and all your time on, on figuring this thing out. Okay. Uh, see you next time. <laughs> Bye.